What's up everybody, this is Joshy Red from Practical Theism. I'm not I'm currently in a hotel room, so this is probably a little bit different than some of the videos I've done in the past, uh, clean audio and everything. This is straight out of my cell phone. But I had something on my mind I wanted to share, a little story <laughs> about why, well, I'm here for a conference up in Seattle and um, my Uber driver on the way to taking me from the airport, from my house to the airport this morning, I had a really interesting story, and there were so many things that went through my mind as he was telling me it. By the way, if you ever, if you're never uh, not a big Uber driver, you should drive with Ubers just because you can learn so much about people, and uh, they usually have no problem sharing their stories. So, I was like five o'clock in the morning. I was exhausted get out of my bed, the Uber driver comes out. First of all, he drives up in a Tesla, which for those of you who Uber frequently, Teslas are not uh, pretty common to have as your Uber ride, but that was pretty awesome. Had a, uh, a Tesla pick me up. And so we're driving down, it's pouring rain at home and uh, five o'clock in the morning. And uh, so I ask him, one of my favorite things to ask an Uber driver is, hey, is this all you do? Or do you do something else? Usually they do something else as well as their Uber driving. And, um, and so that comes out in the story. Um, also, I'm in my gym clothes. I just got back from the gym and wanted to film this. So. So he goes in and he starts telling me about how he, he grew up on Kauai, on Hawaii, um, you know, and then finally he was kind of tired of the island stuff, so he came out here. His dad was a, a surfboard carver, which is pretty cool. And uh, so he, he comes out here, his, his mom's out here, his, his sister's out here, and I found out that he was a, a commercial oil diver. So I don't know exactly what they do, but apparently they do pretty well. They make a lot of money, and uh, at least that's what it seems to be. Uh, but he does that in Thailand, and uh, which prompts the question, well, why the heck is he, why is he out here? So he's just out here, he's visiting his mom, helping his mom out, and the Tesla's actually his, but he lends it to his mom, so when he comes out here, he has a car. Um, but he lives in Thailand, has lived there for, uh, you know, over a dozen years, and uh, he has two twin daughters um, who uh, go to college in the States, and uh he was telling me about his story, about how he was a club owner. And uh, it, you know, my wife and I have gone to Thailand. We went to Thailand in, uh, just before we had Jaden, our first son. So um, it, we were, it was our baby moon and Amber was second trimester. <clears throat> so about four months pregnant. Just entering second trimester, not quite four months, about three months but just entering the second trimester. And so we went out to Thailand, it was our baby moon. We went to Phuket, which is kind of the touristy, beachy, southern part of Thailand. So we touched down in Bangkok and then went down there. And it was awesome, super fun trip. A um, lot of cultural things, it was a culture shock. Never been in, e in an Eastern culture like that before. So it was definitely different from the European Western cultures that I've been to. And he, um, and so he, this guy lived in, in, in uh, Bangkok for, um, you know, quite some time. And uh, I think it's pronounced Kosamui or Kosamui. Uh, there's another place where he lived. He actually was a club owner for about 10 years. He goes on to tell me, I asked him immediately, I was like, well, how's the political climate out there? Because when Amber and I went to Phuket, there was a lot of political unrest um, in the northern region up towards Chiang Mai, um, the northern borders of Thailand. It seemed like there was a lot of political unrest. And he's like, oh, there's, there's always political unrest. <laughs> he's like, when is there not? So he goes on and he starts telling me about some of the situations um, that uh, are going on in Thailand and from the kings to the religious to the like the separation between the north and the south and all these things that are happening. And, um, and it was, uh, it was a lot <laughs> looking at this and you're hearing all this stuff unfold and you're like this litter, my comment was this should literally be a movie. This is insane. Um, so everything from, you know, uh, the, the king who everybody loves to, you know, the, uh, the over the course of time, the kid who nobody likes, but he's in power. And then there's also this mafia component type deal where, uh, you know, spe certain people, certain families is real big on the family. If you ever watch uh, Crazy Rich Asians, it kind of reminded me of that too. But you have these families who own the not just the, the politics, but they own the influence and they own the business and they own the cash flow. And so um, you can get really well connected with like the mafia down there. And it was just 
after every story that he was sending my way, he was just hitting on the primary dysfunction with people. Like it's on full avail in, in, in Thailand and some of these Eastern, Eastern cultures. And we were even talking about that, how we, you don't see, you see some of it out here in the West, but it's just different. There's not really a middle class out there, you know? And uh, so uh, it was just popping into my head. It was like, well, shoot, yeah, that's greed. Well, shoot, yeah, that's, that's power that person was after. And this person was after, you know, money. And this person was after, you know, kind of fame and force. And this person was after the power that they were going to have. And it was just hitting on every single one of, you know, even if you look at Aquinas, uh, every single one of the, the desires and pleasures of the flesh, right? These, these things, these material things in the world that these people are clawing after all the way down to the corrupt cops who come in and they say hey you know i need a uh um you know i need a new pair of shoes or whatever that really is meaning hey you need to give me money and it's they're a point of authority so what do you do in those situations like these things are real and in america and the west we don't have a full sense of what that looks like it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting and kind of sad at the same time because we're so, and I look at, I was just contrasting this in my mind with, um, with Christianity in the West and how we, we boil Christianity down somehow to this, you know, especially in a lot of the, you know, more contemporary uh, traditions, the evangelical traditions, non-denominational traditions, we boil Christianity down to this, simplistic idea of, um, you know, of, of an uh, intellectual ascent of faith, but never really getting into the dysfunction of the human condition, right? And where, whereas with a lot of the more orthodox, Catholic, you know, those types of traditions, they seem to have a fuller sense of this dysfunction, this idea that, you know, original sin didn't come in. It wasn't something that you inherited that you didn't do, but it was a deprivation of something you could have had. And that it was a disfigurement of what we were truly meant to be. And you see that all throughout the ages. And in history, we were even talking about this, history repeats itself over and over and over again. And we lose that. We lose a sense of that out here in the West because we are really spoiled. One of the one of the most humbling experiences when we were in Thailand, actually, I was uh, I got outside of my hotel and I went for a run. I wanted to go for a run. We were close by the beach, so I went for a run to the beach. And I'm just like I like exploring a little bit, so I'm exploring, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna head back to the hotel. And I see the hotel on a hill, and I'm running back, and I'm like, oh, you know what? This looks like a shortcut. I'm gonna take the shortcut. So I start going down the shortcut and I barrel into the slums. Um, I kid you not, the, the houses, this room that I'm in right now is two, maybe three houses. That's how poor some of these people are in these third world countries. So I'm running through and there's chickens running around, the stench, the smell, is beyond anything I've ever smelt before. You have little kids sitting on the porch of these houses. Oftentimes they're tin houses. And so uh, the heat is unbearable on the inside. There's no insulation. And I run all the way back. There's this alleyway of these houses on both sides. I go all the way back and I just see um, public showers, six showers that men, women, and kids are cycling through to take their morning shower. And it was kind of eye-opening because a lot of these people were probably people who help at some of the hotels in these touristy spots. And uh, we lose a sense of just how bad it is in these foreign countries, in these other countries, and I don't wanna say foreign, in these other countries that are not America, that are not the West, that are not cultured with Western culture. Um, there's no middle class. There's the wealthy and the not so wealthy. And, um, but that, just hearing this, this gentleman's story, it was, it was really cool to hear this really unique story, but it also pointed my mind right back to the dysfunction of humanity and why, the whole point of this video is why it is so important for believers of all walks 
to preach the gospel and to get out there and to make the gospel known. The gospel of Christ, the gospel of the God intervening in such an intimate way to cure us of our, our dysfunction through a life of prayer, through a life of internal communion with God through Christ. Like, that is so important. And if there's one thing when it comes to why you should talk about your faith consistently and why you should dive into knowing and understanding your faith more and more, it's that. It's to help cure that, help to cure that dysfunction and help to spread that there is a better way to live. There is a better way of life and it's the way of the cross. There's a better way to life and it's the way of the cross than what that dysfunction does to humanity in some of these areas. Thank God I'm in a place that, uh, in a location where I don't have to experience that for the sake of myself and my family, but at the same time, we all should get a sense of reality, a dose of reality, because we're living in a, in America, we're, as bad as it seems in America, we're living in a freaking bubble compared to what happens in some of these areas. Anyways, thought I'd share that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Hit that like button, pound that subscribe button like a minute so you can get more of this awesome content. And until next time, from all of us here at Practical Theism, happy Lent, catch you then. Thanks.